just a heads up for those that are watching um, at home, uh, we are going to be doing a really quick restream because we have meet, uh, met our limit. Uh, so just stay tuned. Don't panic. No picnics, hopefully. <laughs> we will be right back. All right, and welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2017 Benefiting Doctors Without Borders. Um, I'm going to read a couple of quick donations before we get it, and I hand it over to my lovely next host. Um, we have a $10 donation from Zizzy that says, goes to the choice of who knows what game Zizzy's from. If I am correct, I know a lot of people know it from uh, the Cards Against Humanity, but I believe it actually comes from a text adventure game. I, think, I believe it's called Colossal Cave Adventure. If I am incorrect, I apologize. Um, we have a $15 donation from Other Scott that says, the interview with the X2 runners was amazing. Can't wait for the Xbox, but I'm also loving these Kirby runs. Good luck, everyone. We have a $10 donation from Epic Poke Fan 13 that says, been watching GDQ since SGDQ 2015. Glad to donate during my favorite game series since I was a kid. Thank you to all GDQ staff and runners for hosting this amazing event. I'm greatly enjoying this. And PS announcer, bye We have a $10 donation from Kerbivore that says, congrats on already hitting 500K. Love what you guys do and look forward to it every year. I'll donate another 10 if Edo can do her best Meta Knight. Fight me. I can't do deep voices, I'm sorry. <laughs> $25 from Zeta Gundam uh, says, thanks Edo Bean, here's the donation I promise. Goes to your choice. $10 from Guy McGuy that says, had to donate during the Kirby block, 10 bucks to see in the Sephiroth fight in Kingdom Hearts 2. I'll send 10 extra if the announcer does the cute Kirby. Boyo! $15 from Anonymous that also says, can I get a boyo for the Kirby block? There you go. We have a $5 donation from Watson that says, what is Kirby's favorite Mexican chain? El Pollo Loco. Oh, that's so bad. <laughs> All right, I am going to head this to the lovely DS Dad. Thank you guys so much. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your event.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's DS Dad hot on the mic. I've still got some donations left over from the previous block. I can read one or two of those. Death by Donut gave us $50 and said, what do you call chicken in Spanish? Pollo. Announcer's choice. Well, it's my choice. I'm going to say kill the animals. B Rad is Rad gave us $5 and said, first year watching AGDQ. This is actually SGDQ. Super fun to watch, and I get lost in the gameplay. Great even. Uh, I think that's a great event. Great people, great cause. Keep up the good work. Aegis Kid 100 gave us $50 and said, what is it Kirby supposed to say? hi -o, boyo, banjo, kipo, flapjack, applesauce? I think it's Poyo. President Vocelli gave us $15 and said, I need to get this robo RoboBot already. Donation goes to Metroid Fusion 0% run. That sounds ridiculously difficult. It does, President Vocelli. Barth gave us $10 and said, good luck to the runners and a big thank you to the people that made this event possible. You guys made this world a better place. Anonymous gave us $50 and said, forget all this high-pitched stuff. I'll double this if announcer says, where's Rachel in her best Christian Bale Batman voice? I'm not uh, Ido Bean, but I might be able to do Christian Bale. Where's Rachel? OK, I think it's about time we had a Twitch ad. So I'll be, see you back here in 75 seconds in three, two, one. Okay, we're back from that Twitch ad break. This is DS Dad with you uh, for this upcoming Mega Man block. We still have a bunch of donations left over from the previous Kirby block, so I'm going to keep reading some of those until we're ready to go. Po Poyo Predicaments gave us $50 and said, hey, a longtime GDQ watcher, but I never got to catch it live. Glad I can catch it live, especially to watch Kirby. Keep up the great work, runners. This is impressive. Also, how about a hearty King DD laugh? I got to say, I don't know what Didi laughs, Didi's laugh sounds like, so I assume it's like this. <laughs> that boy gave us $5 and said, I'm watching this with my boyfriend, and he is loving his first GDQ experience. Thanks for bringing all these great people together for a fun event. Also, save the animals. Well, that'll happen. Brant Nerd gave us $150 and said, hey, Will, text me when you hear this. Poyo. Anonymous gave us $200. Thanks, Anonymous. Thanks to everyone for putting on this, um, such an amazing event for a great cause. Well, thank you, Anonymous. And we're ready to go with Mega Man X6 being run by Orsa. Take it away, Orsa. Hey, 
All right, so uh, I'm Orsa, and this is Rockman X6. Um, can you guys introduce yourselves? Maybe. <laughs> Do you think uh, you can? I am Crack Attack, I think. Yo, I'm Plum. I think they're both right. So uh, I think we're good to go whenever, whenever you guys are. All right, I'll count down from three then. OK, three, two, one, go. Good luck, have fun. All right, so this is the all stages category. So we're going to be beating all the bosses and then going to beat Sigma. Um, we're going to be using both X and Zero in this run. So we're going to start out with X. We'll have plenty of time to explain Zero later. So do one of you guys want to talk about X? Yeah, I guess I'll go a little bit into movement. This game is super, super different from like every other Mega Man X game. There's like 10 different types of dashes in this game. So you've got your normal dash jump, which you're going to do a lot. Uh, in the PS1 X games, normally when you start a dash, there's like a starting lag on it. So if you crouch and then do the dash on the ground, you don't get that starting lag and you're just instantly at full speed. So you can chain dash jumps into those. You've got your saber, your cancel, your saber cancels your momentum so you can saber climb like that. It's super cool. And X movement is really fluid. Zero is going to be slightly similar, but zero saber stinks, so you can't do the momentum cancels. All right, so this is the intro stage. Um, there's a boss coming up who we're going to need to beat, and then we're going to say hi to Hymax as well. Uh, Hymax is intended to be a fight that you're supposed to lose, so during this fight, I'm going to be taking a lot of damage in order to make that go as quick as possible at the end. So what he's going to want to do is he's going to want to hit the ideally hit the body part 24 times and then hit the ball part once. But if he uh, gets low on health, he may just have to hit the ball twice. Hopefully that won't happen. We'll see. That's going to uh, right, not this, safe strats at all. This is the good pattern. There's a lot of health management in this part. And yes, you, you can die in this part, but not on the next part. And then I guess just to clarify, since it's a little bit ambiguous with uh, X5 and X6, this is on normal difficulty, uh, which is fairly hard, people would consider. So Orson needs to be kind of careful. Yeah. It's a super uh, trick-heavy run. Early on, there's not too much except for the maybe the saber climbs, but there's a lot of glitches you can do in this game. OK, so after this fight, Hymax is going to show up. And since I'm such low health, uh, as soon as he runs into me or throws a ball at me, I'm going to reach one HP, and then that'll end the intro stage. And then this game also uses IGT as its main timing method, so version differences are kind of irrelevant. But you'll also notice on a couple boss fights, like when Orsa gets hit by a high max here, uh, he's going to have to walk back into place. Uh, if you're only going by IGT, by max. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so max goes by max, but we'll see him later. Yeah, if you're only going by IGT, you can just dash into him on the right side, and then Mega Man gets to walk for like an hour over to the left. Yep. And you get to uh, skip the cutscenes too by pressing start. Yep. You know, the Katamari guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're actually going to be starting out with Rainy Turtleoid, but we're not going to be going to the boss in this stage. At least not the, the usual boss. Do any of you guys want to talk about all areas and stuff? Yeah, so basically every stage, there are two exits for it. There is the intended exit where you go fight the Maverick, and there's also the alternate exit where at first you'll fight Zero, Nightmare Zero, then you'll fight Hymax, and then after that you'll fight Dynamo. The first fight, if you kill Zero, you unlock Zero, because Zero is not a playable character for Orsa right now. Then if you fight Hymax and kill Hymax, you'll unlock the uh, gate stages, which are like the final Sigma stages. Yep. Every uh, stage, oh sorry, every stage has an alt area. Some of them are faster than others. Turtleoid is not the fastest to be getting zero from, but there are parts in the alt area that I'm gonna be wanting to collect for later. Like I just mentioned with High Max, though, unlocking the uh, final gate stages, that's why this is uh, all stages, because in any percent you just do two stages, then go straight there. And in this stage, he wants to kill every single one of those blue robots. There's going to be four in each segment. And he needs to destroy the generator right after. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I won't let him cross. Yep. So whenever that rain appears, that's what he's doing every time. If he skips one, he has to go back and get it. And there's a pretty cool pillar jump he can do here. That was uh, discovered by uh, Chile. Nice. Oh, nice. Yep. That's a scary strat to do. But. Yep. The rain can be scary because you're consistently taking damage slowly throughout this section, so you want to make sure you're going quick so you don't die. 
Uh, did you mention Nightmares Crack? I did. I didn't uh, crack. No, I okay. did not. Go ahead. So those little like squid octopus looking dudes, they're dropping blue balls. When you pick up the blue balls, it'll give you eight uh, Nightmare Souls. And basically how parts work in this game is equipping parts, which will be like, they'll increase your dash speed, increase your damage with certain weapons. You need to have a certain rank to be able to equip them. For beating a boss, you'll get 200 Nightmare Souls. And Orsa needs to beat two stages and then get 100 Nightmare Souls from the Nightmares. So he's going to have to pick up 12 and a half of the uh, Nightmare yeah. doohickeys. They, they each drop um, a small soul, which will give you eight. And slowly over time, it depreciates into a smaller soul, which will give you four. And then they reform after that if you take too long. And those uh, little guys that are saying help, he's actually collecting specific ones because those are the parts he needs. Yeah, the one he just got in this area, he got two of them. One of them was Saber Plus, which will increase the damage of Zero's Saber. Changing the controls other, on there. Mm -hmm. And what the other beast? is Hyper Dash. Yeah. X controls slightly differently than Zero, so I use different control setups for both of them. Okay, so here's Nightmare Zero. There's a fun exploit with this boss where if you hit him with a Saber, he's intended to teleport, but you can mitigate that just by slashing him in the air instead of on the ground. He still teleports. He on still his teleports own at times. random, yeah. But. Ooh! <laughs> That's my favorite scream. I love you, crack. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that unlocks zero. So now we'll be using zero for most of the Maverick stages. <laughs> X will be back a little bit later, but we'll be using zero for the next little while. Okay, so next we'll be going to Sheldon, Shield Sheldon. Um, why are we going to Shield Sheldon, Plum? We're going to Shield Sheldon because we're going to get a weapon that is a shield, but it's also the best defensive weapon in the entire game because it's just like this little... No, it's just too good. <laughs> it's too an, good. It's an oval that floats in front of Zero for no reason, and every time your saber is in it, every unique frame of your saber's animation will deal damage. Yes. So it makes boss fights completely trivial. Most of them, anyway. There's a couple that are still tough, but... So you'll see there is a technique in X4 and X5 called saber dash canceling, where when you swing your saber, you cancel it with a dash, then you cancel the dash with the saber, uh, and any boss will typically not get invincibility frames from the first two saber slashes. <laughs> so you'll alternate dash and slash to kill them very quickly. Sheldon is going to be the only time you see that in this run. He's going to do a manipulation here where he waits out the laser. That way, the next set of lasers in the room here, he actually, uh, they're on a specific timer once he gets near them. So he kind of waited that one out just to get the next lasers. Yeah, the laser spawns aren't global. They only spawn when you get close to them. So you can sort of abuse that to get a better cycle. And yeah, the SDC that we were talking about, it's only used here. Yeah, you and can use it on other bosses, but it's slower everywhere It's a little else. slower, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's more commonly found in X4 and 5, but in X6, there's actually something better than the SDC. The guard shell. The guard shell. Yeah. What is that? It's an oval. <laughs> it's a hat sometimes. So that's Saber Dash canceling. If that seemed fast, that's really <laughs> slow compared yeah. to Guard Shell. <laughs> Sheldon's one of the slower Mavericks in the game. so And you can't up. do that on every boss, otherwise the game would be obviously too easy. Yep. Although if you want the game to be too easy, uh, there's a couple other interesting glitches. <laughs> <laughs> the game is actually very, very difficult casual. A lot of people like, have the same experience where they can't figure out where to go or what to do or how to beat a certain boss. But like once you know even like the basic tricks to this run, then it's it becomes a whole lot easier. You get to abuse a lot of things that were kind of broken in a way. And the next stage Ors is gonna do is one of the main reasons why it's done is it's short. Because yeah. Ors says two hundred nightmare souls, he's gonna basically be two hundred nightmare souls off of uh, the first rank where you can equip parts after this. So he's just gonna beat this and then his dash will be like double speed with yep. hyper dash. Unfortunately, this has the best song, obviously. Yeah, this is the final countdown. This one's so good. The only bad part about doing the stage early is it makes the boss fight pretty difficult. Uh, without Majinian's weakness, he can 
be a kind of a jerk. So there is a chance I might die here, but I'm hoping for the best. Yeah, and there is a different route that a lot of the Japanese runners, like Fujiyama, who's absolutely based, does, that does <laughs> Turtoid right now instead of Majinian. Yeah. And that route owns. So here's the guard shell. Um, I'm using it to take nightmares out fast, but I'll also be using it on these sort of cable bosses that are coming up, and you'll be able to see just how strong it is. And the reason why Orsa has to jump slash is, like I said, it only makes your saber deal damage on each unique frame of it. So when the saber just sticks on the final uh, frame of the uh, jump slash, Orsa needs to start a new jump slash animation. The guard shell does actually reflect some projectiles as well. Yeah, that's what it's intended to do, but it also does a multitude of other things. There's a lot of things that are intended in this game, and yeah, you'll see otherwise. So that should be, yep, he's got three. He needs 300 before he gets to the door, so yep. that when he beats the boss, he'll get 500. I don't unlock a part slot. Otherwise, it, the next stage will be quite a way slower. So this is the Water Flea Infinity Maginia? <laughs> yes. So you can't actually use Guard Shell on this guy, because after he takes a certain amount of damage, he'll fly back. So I'm going to be using the Z-Buster instead. The annoying thing about this boss, though, is since he likes to hover around at Z-Buster, you can only use while you're standing on the ground. Yeah. And, and then there's the, also... The closer he is, the more uh, damage the Buster does. So you, that's why he goes up close to him instead of just going far away and shooting. Uh, that's not actually how Z-Buster works. Z-Buster is weird. It makes absolutely no Well, if no you're, sense. like, in its hitbox, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I meant. Okay, so that's good. That was good. Nice. That was pretty good RNG there. Yeah. I got a couple. If he hovers in the air like that, that's bad. You want him to come down as much as possible. And you did see one cool hit Orsa did where Infinity Maginia was slightly too high for the Z-Buster. So he used the close range first two slashes to not hit him. Then the extended hitbox on the third slash hit him. And third slash does way more damage than the first two. It causes a lot of lag, especially if the enemy's still stuck inside of it. So he tries not to do that mm -hmm. too often. And there's also a glitch right here. So Orsa only has the rank to equip one part, but by equipping and unequipping a part on the same frame, he's going to be able to equip two parts on the same slot. So right now he has Saber Plus and Hyper Dash. So Saber does more damage, and he goes fast. Yep. So this stage is going to be the first that you're going to see of the Nightmare Effect system in this game. Who wants to take that one? Uh, okay, so when you beat a stage in this game, kind of like in Mega Man X1, where, for instance, if you beat uh, Eagle Dude when you go to Spark Man stage, the lights go out because the ship crashes into the stage. Because he just did Infinity Maginion, now that he's on Turtoid, uh, the lights get turned out. Uh, and it's really fun. It's one of my favorite nightmare effects. Yeah. And it is kind of controllable. Because if he just entered a different stage that wasn't highlighted red, there'd be no nightmare effect on that. And nightmare effects are only based on the last boss he did. They're not permanent. This is one of the more annoying ones casually, but it's just fine in the speedrun. It doesn't really slow anything down in the speedrun, though, so that's why we do this. It still feels cool, though. Yeah. And Hyper Dash makes Pillar Jump much easier. Yeah, you have to do a slightly harder variant of it, but it's faster. I'd still say overall it's much easier than the uh, vanilla. And Hyper Dash does obviously change the movement quite a bit. The jumps will be a little bit different. And then not just being a short stage to be able to equip parts, but uh, Rakoa, uh, which is this attack, uh, that's the attack he got from Majinian. It's really nice for taking out the uh, little switches to break the shield on the generator. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, Turtloid, uh, also known as Blastoise, coming up here, is we don't use the guard shell glitch on him, but what we do is um, we get in his front toe and we slash towards him and then face away, and it like messes with his hitbox, and you, you'll see what we're talking about in a second. Basically what we think happens is there are like four separate squares that kind of like make up an invincibility hitbox on him, and Capcom was really good with it, so they forgot to place them together in one spot, and you can actually just 
get your saber inside that one spot. X can also do that with like Ray Arrow and yeah. basically anything where you can just get it to hit in that spot will shred him. Okay. And at this point, uh, he doesn't need any more extra souls. It doesn't really speed up anything else after that. So the 500 he got, he can equip one part, which he did the glitch to uh, equip up to four. Mm -hmm. Doesn't need to really grind anything else. Yeah, I'll have three by the time I finish the Mavericks, which is nice, because then I can equip a health item for the gate stages. Yeah, the third part slot is only going to be available once he has a 1,000 souls, and that's like a special part slot for like the higher tier of parts, which he's going to get on this stage. It's called a life recover, and basically yep. it's uh, instant health refill. Thankfully, there's a sub tank and the Refloid that has uh, life recover right beside each other, so... It's two for the price of one. How about uh, not explaining the glitch and just let it go? Okay, yeah. Okay. Nothing to see here. Yeah, we'll just show this off. <laughs> We're going to do this stage as intended. Do you leave your game shark on, Orsa? Uh, I'm not sure what's going on right now. I don't think so. Put it in the hex that. folder. So what happened is uh, the spinny slash that you get from Turtoloid and Suizon. Uh, and Suizon makes you invincible while you're using it, but it kind of, if you're standing on solid ground and the ground disappears while you use it, uh, the game just leaves you with the invincibility for Suizon until you use the move again. Yep, it's useful everywhere. It's going to be used in a lot of the upcoming stages. Which is really nice that the movement in X6 is so fluid because mm -hmm. it lends itself really well to a glitch like this. Definitely. Now, Yamark has one of two patterns. If he goes in the air, it takes a little bit longer. If he goes on the ground, uh, you'll see uh, he might die pretty fast. Yeah, so like we said earlier, Sheldon was a very slow boss fight. Yeah. <laughs> a very skill-based uh, two uh, square <laughs> button presses. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to be SDCing these bosses with Guard Shell because, like Plum said, the saber, every frame of the saber's animation will deal damage when the Guard Shell hitbox is inside the boss. So you want it to extend as long as possible. And then that combined with Saber Plus, you do even plus one even more. Right. And unlike classic Mega Man, uh, bosses in this game will have variable amounts of health. It's not just like, for instance, in Mega Man 8, they all have 40 health. Mm -hmm. And this Maverick is called Metal Shark Player, which is obviously the best translation we can have. <laughs> I will also actively defend this stage as the best design stage in all of uh, Mega Man X. You're wrong. It's got a good uh, song. No, it is oh. objectively fantastic. So <laughs> this stage is, an, is kind of an auto-scroller. Um, the gimmick is that there's going to be this crusher that's coming up and down. As long as I make the right cycles, it's an auto-scroller. But there are some really tight cycles in this stage that I'll be going for. And he's going to leave the mech at the top here. And what that does is this first section won't crush him now because the, it doesn't crush that mech for whatever strange reason. And then just another Ensuizan invincibility there. Right. So this is, the, this is the hard one. Let's see. Yeah, this is a very uh, tough stage casual, too. I'd say this is probably the second hardest stage in the run. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah, nice. And there's one more part to this. And he got it. Okay, Fast awesome. Cycles. That is extremely hard. Okay. So there's one more crusher coming up, but thankfully this one's not that hard. Um, this would be a good time for donations. You got any? I've always got loads. I've got one from Satoru, $50, saying, Oh boy, X6. Good luck, Orsa, on this wonderful X series entry. Hope you smash my time from AGDQ 2012. Also, good luck to all the X runners during this block. Jump and shoot to help, help out MSF. Thanks, Satoru. Can I keep going? You sure. just stop down? Go for it. Sure. Kerplop gave us $50 and said, waited for the Mega Man X block to donate since he's my childhood gaming hero. Speedrunning them seems like a real nightmare, though, so I'm glad to see someone else can do it. 
Watch out for those donuts of doom in Blaze Heatnix's stage. Thank you. You can jump over that, but the timing for it is kind of tight. Don't lie, you just wanted the health. Yeah. <laughs> then coming up is an absolutely epic mid boss. <laughs> this guy is. <laughs> Never again. He's Nightmare Press, and he lives up to the name. Yeah. So what he's going to do is he can spawn his hole in like three different spots. If it's on the left or right, it's bad. In the middle, it's good. But ideally, what you can do that Orsa's not going to do, because it's really stupid on any difficulty other than easy, like it's not RTA feasible at all. Mm -hmm. You get crushed by it in the middle, and then you need to just kill everything in the middle before the game kills you yes. in like two seconds. It's doable on, upper, on higher difficulties, but it's ridiculously it's difficult. It's one of those things you'll get it like once, maybe every hundred attempts. Mm -hmm. Then Orsa is going to do a really cool strat here. He's going to utilize the pause button. <laughs> yeah, guard shell is weirdly programmed. You can't actually activate it without going to the pause menu. So what he did there with the pause was uh, during the pause, since it kind of like stops the game, he used that to check MSP's pattern. Mm, yeah. If you wait till he commits to an attack and then pause, it gives you a little bit more time to react to him. No, don't worry, you can't do this on every boss. Yep. So some of the ones that you really need it to work on, it doesn't work on. All right, so next up is the aforementioned Blaze Heat next stage, and we're actually going to be using X here. It is my favorite stage in the game. It's pretty good. Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> so while a lot of people casually may remember this stage as being really hard, it's completely trivial in the speedrun. Mm. The only thing that matters about it is the charge attacks Orsa will be using on this have random patterns for how they strike. So he's always going to be guaranteed to basically get a two cycle. But if he does get good luck with like the spread pattern, he can one cycle all of them. Basically, except for the fourth. Donut. Basically guaranteed. Remember, I used five charge metal anchors nice. on one in the practice room. <laughs> that was good. Get to see some uh, good X action here finally. Yeah. He gets to the return. So we picked up Metal Anchor from Metal Shark Player, and I'll be using it pretty extensively here because it shreds these donuts pretty hard. Yeah, and those eagles just fly wherever they want. We call them Storm Eagle. Yeah. It's also they worth noting eagle. that you're not invincible during that, so Orsa can't get hit by, like, say, a nightmare or projectiles. Yep. As soon as you get hit, it cancels the animation, so... And these pillars of fire do like half a million damage. Yep. So I grabbed the replays for safety, but they give you a variable amount of health. So Let's hope for the best here. <laughs> the stray bullet every yeah. time. There is there are a couple backups for these, so this isn't the worst thing in the world. If he wants to do this all in one life, he basically has to get all the metal anchors at least do most of their damage. Yeah. The middle anchor charge, that is. And sometimes the birds just won't go. The birds are not going right now. Yeah. So he's okay. going to use another weapon here, the Maginian weapon for X. Actually, we use it a little bit here. Yeah. Yeah. We use it just because he's at the bottom. The donut starts at the bottom. So, and it rises, mm -hmm. it just goes straight up. Yeah. This is also one of the silliest weapons in the game because it baseline charge does eight damage to every boss in the game, which is a lot of damage. Yeah. So it's one of the better weapons. The He's going to be using it on the boss the here. The ray arrow is also nice for that donut because it basically guarantees it's a one cycle. Um, otherwise, there's that lava rising that could get me. Hopefully, I'll be one cycling this one. There's a pretty consistent setup for it. Okay. Almost. Unlucky. There we go. All right. But yeah, that was a good stage. Not bad. That stage can go very poorly if you're unlucky. So. There's a lot of backup strats, but they almost all of them are way slower. And I guess it should also be noted that where possible, you don't really want to be using weaknesses in this game, even as X, just because where uh, Ground Dash, which is Heatnix's weakness, would be doing the exact same amount of damage as a charged Ray Arrow. Ground Dash has a really, really long like weakness stun animation where this is just 
super fast and dealing the same amount. <laughs> you have to charge oh it. Oh my or gosh! So you have to okay. charge it. I swear, that's what how it works. All right. Yeah. Also, I don't have ground dash, so I couldn't use it even if I wanted to. Ground dash is uh, Scarabitch's weapon, which it's gonna be the final Maverick stage. Okay. Doing good on time. The routing for this game is really interesting because a lot of it is, there's so many different things to take into account with boss weapons, different parts from Repoids, needing to unlock characters, as well as just actual weaknesses. And there's a lot to route around. It's fun. The Franker Z coming up here. Yep. A little pupper. Yeah, so this is an ice stage. So there's ice physics everywhere. So you can probably take a good guess what's going to be happening here. And how I mentioned there's a bunch of different types of dashing in this game. One of my favorite types of dashing is if you do a dash jump and you're holding a direction in the frame before you hit the ground, you let go of the direction, uh, you will get an insane speed boost. Mm -hmm. And usually that's <laughs> detrimental to you. Yes. All right. Working as intended? Yes. All right, there's one spot here, yeah, okay. You just have to let go of forward super early and you're usually fine. Yeah, if not, you'll get this slip dash I mentioned, which will just throw you into the pit. Okay, so this is a fun part of the game here. You can't help that doggo anymore. Nope. Yeah, so Tetris is one. by far okay, the worst part of Wolfang. You just need to get these to come up on mm -hmm. the uh, proper sides because yep. they can just stack on the left. It's a little bit easier with zero since you have the double jump. Um, you can go left or right, and either way guarantees you'll get out of here pretty fast. Yeah, with X you need to get the jumper part, and then when you use Magma Blade, you'll hover in the air for a bit. So you need to have jumper to get super high, then hover in the air for a brief Oop. moment with uh, go Magma flying. Blade. He's not. No. <laughs> no. You can carry the momentum through the boss door if you're timing your dashes correctly, but it's pretty tough. It's nice because it just like spawns you right next to Wolfang. Mm -hmm. You know, the weapon he got from Heatnix is the Fire Blade. It actually resets his pattern if he uses it. So he's going to check first to see if he gives the good pattern where he can just guard shell glitch him, nope. which he did not. So he's going to fire until he gives him the good pattern. There's the good pattern. That's how we do Heatnix before uh, Wolfang. Yeah, the old route did Heatnix last, but a semi-recent reroute uh, puts Heatnix before Wolfang, which is really nice. And then their Japanese route is a little different, but no one really likes to do it, especially in the Western community, just because of things like Wolfang. It's very inconsistent. Yeah. All right, so next up is Scarevich, which is everybody's favorite stage. <laughs> uh, thankfully, it's not too bad in the speed run. Do you want me to explain sure, it? Sure, go for it. Okay. <laughs> uh, so basically how Scarevich's stage works is there are eight rooms with two variations on each room and four teleporters. So 16 rooms total. Uh, you don't need to worry about learning how to do any of those because the totem teleporters, if you are in any sort of invincibility frames, uh, you will pass through them and you can get inside of Ice Burst, which is a kind of like platform type object you can place, and that'll give you crush frames, and use the crush frames to just skip all the totems. Yep. Oh my. <laughs> the timing's a little awkward with Falcon armor. Yeah. But you, if you have Hyper Dash on X, it's completely free. The problem is, uh, since X oh, hasn't do been doing do it. stages, X does not have access Dude. to the first <laughs> oh. It's really scary because if you skip totems and do them out of order, if Orso would hit these, he can... Uh, bad oh, things no. will happen to the video game. Yeah. All right. Made oh, it. that was close. <laughs> yeah, so you ran out of the ice. <laughs> yeah. So you're intended to be like teleporting all around the museum and fighting giant totem poles, but you can skip all that. The fourth one has a very high chance of crashing mm -hmm. if you enter that. 
just realized I hadn't I didn't have a safety save for that. So <laughs> good thing we made it. All right, so I'm going to be using Rayar here again as well for the exact same reasons I used it on Heatnix. This time he does have the weakness, so the weakness is a uh, Yammer option, but Yammer option will cause Scaravich to just do whatever. And that's the eight mounts. That's eight mounts. So at this part, he has the extra, like, super part that we can equip. And uh, he grabbed, as we said earlier, he grabbed a, an item called Life Recover that he, he can start to equip now. Yep. Once per stage, you can refill your life to full with that. It's going to be really convenient later on. And it's not like the sub tank where you can reuse it over and over again. You can only, like you said, only once per stage. And then you can never use it again. That's Gate. We're going to see him again later. He's, <laughs> He's a, a really great nice boss, dude. Really best boss. Oops. Okay, so one of the Gate Fortress. There's three, debatably four, stages here. And all of the bosses in them are terrible. So I'm Look sorry. to that. Yeah. yeah Every hello? single one. Nightmare Mother is fantastic. Uh huh. I think we beat you two to one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Right. Yeah, so this wall is off a lot of people casually. With uh, X, you'll want to be using like jumper and ice burst to stand on as a platform and get high jumps. With zero, if you unlock him, which is really easy Whoa. to do. Okay. I'll just double jump up. Can you put it in the hex folder? Yep. Yeah, so someone really likes copy-pasting enemies here at Capcom, but thankfully we don't need to deal with any of them. And like I said earlier, when he loses control, he loses the invulnerability glitch, so he can't just carry it to the boss. That's my favorite room in the whole game. <laughs> <laughs> the lava rises up in there, and you can uh, you have to get to the top if you don't make it in time. But he made it in time, so he's all right. Yep. There's a couple sections here where the lava is just coming up. slowly goes back down. And then one thing that's nice about uh, getting health drops, which is random, is Orsa just completely filled up his sub tank. Yep. All right, so one more lava section before we get to the boss. Auto squirrel. Yep. Close. Is Zero going to feel like taking a swim? I hope so. I think so. It. Oh, no, the lava's coming. Oh, no. Oh. oh OK. Dang. All right, so do one of you guys want to explain Nightmare Mother? Sure. <laughs> uh, Nightmare Mother is kind of like the classic Mega Man Devil type enemy. There are two of them. They have two hitboxes. They're going to spin around the stage like five times, and then they're going to choose to go somewhere. And what Orsa wants to see is basically just anything that's not double top. He wants one to be on the ground so he can just keep on using Raku Kojin, which is the falling metal blade, and it's going to do heckin' damage to this boss. This is the boss where everybody uh, throws their controller and rage quits at. Okay. But me and Plum seem to like it. Yeah. This is like a really good pattern in any percent, but you don't want to see this uh, when you have Raku Kojin. Yeah, you actually have his weakness in all stages. And then Orsa did something cool there. Is uh, I mentioned earlier that the third slash of the saber does significantly more damage. So he timed those slashes so that the first two would miss, and he'd only hit with the third to deal big boy damage. This is like oh, the nice. best any percent pattern. <laughs> this is the god pattern for any percent. Nice. Another third slash. And then one other thing to note is uh, this boss is like hovering right at half health right now. When this dips below, he, they're going to go into fast inner cycles where they're going to be spinning. If you saw when they would like hit a corner, they would stop for a brief moment. Now they're just going to be nonstop moving like this. Fortunately, in Suizon locks your vertical position. And then, yeah, Orsa is just able to chain Raku Kojin. Nice. Okay. That's good. That boss owns. Yeah.
was about four. Yeah, Optimal's two, so I didn't get the best luck there, but that's... You have to get I played, good patterns and everything, yeah, too. Yeah, I played pretty well, so that's you need all the I can ask for. You need the eye to come out horizontally for the Raku Kojins, and you need that to happen on both eyes, which it's very unlikely to happen. Okay, so gate two, or I guess, if you're considering them as separate stages, the first half of this one is pretty short. Wily stages? We're about to see the most yeah. useful weapon in the entire game, Kyoroga. <laughs> Yeah, this it's is what you get from the thing. All right, check this out. Oh, nice. Just look at that vertical speed. What a god. It's useful in, I think, like two parts of the run, maybe three. Okay, and this part's a little weird. As soon as he gets to this area, he wants to ground dash. Because if he, if he stays in specific spots of this map here, then um, he'll despawn a top left totem that right there which he passed by. But he wants this one right here to spawn, so and he takes crush damage to go through, just like an X5. Working as intended. And then off to high max. Yeah, it's one of those stages in MMX that's like really, really slow and awful casually, but you can speed it up really fast with speedrun strats. Hi, Max. Hi, Max. Higher, Max. All right, so this is a good boss fight. So in the all stages category, he has, uh, with this route, he has four shields that you have to break through, and then he does the last pattern. This bull. I think you mean death ball? <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so once okay. you break four, he goes to the center. Oops, nice. You try not to touch his balls either. <laughs> Yeah, when you break the balls, they split into four, and they do really high damage. Oh. But it's a little awkward, the timing between dashing horizontally and getting your saber. You can get too many lag frames if you put the saber too much inside of them. Bye, Max. Bye, Max. Bye, Max. And then, like Orsa said, this stage flows into another stage. So if you're to save and you get to this next stage and you reload your game, it would actually start at the beginning of the yeah, stage. Yeah, it doesn't even take you back to the menu, yeah. so... That's why there's, yeah, there's no stage select at that point. And this is what I'd consider the hardest stage in the game. I would probably mm -hmm. agree with you on that. This stage should also be noted that this is different for uh, X and Zero. X's is very fun and fast, and Zero's is this. It's moderately fast. Certain uh, crusher stages, if you will. Shoutouts to Hiroga. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> and this crusher is not very lenient awesome. either. It'll let yeah. you. It'll crush you if you're just slightly standing up and you're trying to crouch like that. Okay. <laughs> like that, yeah. This is the hardest stage in the game. All right, I'll give that one more try. It wasn't too far on the stage, luckily. You got the fast cycle on Heat Next, though, which is sick. I like that uh, wall thing. I should do that more often. Yeah. I got the hard part of the fast cycle here, too. So it's Trying to get the fast cycles on this takes a lot of practice yeah. to do. Okay, there we go. That was good. And then he equips the MR option here, which are those three dragonflies. You can and actually, like... Get into the next pit over, but it's entirely dependent on if Yammer option wants to cooperate. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like Water Shield from Mega Man 10, where they're, it's not a solid barrier and All things right. can pass through. And here's some NT Creates level design right here. <laughs> Everyone's favorite boss coming up here? Yep. So he's going to do the Guard Cell glitch. Not on the boss itself, but on the uh, balls it throws. And he's going to, ideally in all stages, there's a glitch. He can get the Ensuizan glitch, but only if he gets the blue ball. So he's going to want the blue balls to come out. Yep. <laughs> so hopefully I'll be, I'll be a little lucky here. The other balls that he gets, he, he'll just reflect them back for damage. That's the only way to damage gate. And you just, that's why we call him RNG Gate. Yeah, you just have to wait for him to throw him. Waste the literal minutes. Great. 
for just dreaming of using Shoen Zon. <laughs> yeah. Also, it should be noted that Zero has a really high knockback, and if Orsa gets hit like once, there's yeah. a good chance he's going in that pit. It's okay, I just won't get hit. Blue ball? Uh, uh, yeah. Hopefully, another blue ball comes out. I didn't have a good setup on that. The thing he really wants in Suizan invincibility for is how Gate can move to your location if you're just standing on top of Gate with in Suizan invincibility. Gate's move actions will just basically be standing in place. Oh my god. That gosh. was pretty scary. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what an absolutely based platform. And the positioning is super, super important where he jumps because he's going to throw the ball where he's at at that point. So yeah. he wants to bait one of the balls to a very specific position and then and then slash it at a very specific position. Yeah, you also want to make sure you're dropping gate in good location so he's not slashing the platform below him like he did for me the first time. This is about what I was expecting. That's a, this is a standard gate right here. Yeah. Be a little worse than standard. <laughs> Maybe. Gate is my favorite boss in this game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> nothing is wrong. Don't worry. Don't worry about a thing. You're just trying to make it interesting for yeah. you guys. That was it. How fun is it if Gate doesn't get to fight back? Use, yeah, use the life recovery. Since this is technically one stage, the life recovery he used before high max, it's not back. Yep. So I have to not get hit again, which means I'm going to play this pretty safe. Come on, Gate. All right, there we go. Okay. I like his stance that he's in right there. Yeah. <laughs> Working as intended. That was fine. All right, so that'll take us into the refights here. That basically describes most of the boss of the game. <laughs> They're fine. I'm okay with this run. Yep. Yeah, I am too. It's not bad. Hey, Matt, this time was solid. All right, so there's a very, very short stage before the refights, and then we'll be getting into that. Um, why do I do the refight order I do? Uh, you, that's a really good question. <laughs> How about you explain it since only you Absolutely. know? Absolutely. So I start at the bottom from Majinian. Uh, Majinian is the hardest refight. He's the one who will damage you the most. Um, and then I just work my way to the top because that's where the teleporter is going to spawn. I disagree with this refight order because I think you should start from the top. Okay. Yeah. Let's agree to disagree. Because here's the thing right now. You have an empty sub tank, but that's after true. a game arc, you could refill your sub tank very easily. That's true. But right now, since Orsa, the health spawns at the very top of this, Orsa is not going to be able to quickly go up to fill up his sub tank. But he shouldn't really need it. It's more I'll of a thing for X, I should not be zero. Okay, yeah. And if he wants to take damage, he would preferably take it from the bubbles. Yeah. Because they do less. That was but good. He doesn't need that. That was a really good fight. Yep. And now we're going to see what uh, Shield Sheldon looks like when he's fought quickly. Yeah. Most of these bosses are going to be the same. The only one that's going to change are Scaravich and Heat Mix because I did not fight those guys with zero. Everything else is going to get Guard Shelled. This one's a little different now. Yep. Since you SDC'd the first fight. Use his own shield against him. So you'll see comparatively how fast it is compared to the SDC. Oops. All 
And then you if get... you want to try this at home, it really is as simple as just walk up to the boss <laughs> with guard shell and press one there's, button. There's nothing else going on. You just got to get the positioning right. That's all there is. All right, so I'm a little low on health, so I'm going to do a bit of a safer strat here instead of running into Turtleoid. Blast noise. Also, can we talk about how the turtle boss doesn't hide in his shell while Shield Sheldon does? Very nice. Yeah, so since he was zoning through Turtleoid, makes it so that you're taking hits off of the missiles, not off of Turtleoid, so that saves some health. And the other way, which is a little slower, is you can break the shell. He can break his shell, and then you can uh, hit him from there. And there's going to be a really cool strat on this refight where Orsa is going to be dealing about 75% of the boss's health Hopefully. on a single hit. Uh, he's got a neat setup for it. He did a bit more. Uh, so what happened there is when uh, Skarovic starts pushing his poop, uh, he has this brief period of time where he will not have any invincibility frames. And like Crack Attack mentioned earlier, that your Z-Buster does like infinite damage, your position during that period of time will determine how much damage you do to Scarevich yeah. and you can one-shot him. I was a fair bit late, but you did see it a little bit. I took about a, I took about a quarter off. It, yeah, it is possible to one-cycle him in that yeah. way. I don't actually think it's possible to do with the setup I do. I think uh, you have to the setup go wastes for a bit it. too much okay. time. Yeah. And the Metal Shark is more or less the same boss. Yep. It's a shame the bosses in this game die so quickly because they actually do have some really interesting patterns. Definitely. X5 is kind of similar where the boss patterns are very intricate, but the difference in that game is bosses get like 10 million health, so you actually get to see the fights. So Heatnix is a big jerk. I don't have a good way of dealing damage to Heatnix because he gets some pretty big iframes after almost everything. I'm going to be using Sensui's on, which is the best of a bad situation. And it is interesting that uh, with Ground Dash on this guy, uh, he'll go into like weakness uh, stun. And he does go into like a weakness stun here, but it's like the same period of time as normal iframes. Here he goes. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm just he using a really bad pattern here. I'm using this just for the iframes. That's about it. At least you could hear this jamming boss theme. And what Orsa did at the end is we called out Lava Swim. If you're feeling really risky, you can do pretty much the whole fight every time he dives, chase him down into the lava. Mm -hmm. But if you take a hit off of the lava instead of Heatnix, uh, you're losing like half your health. Yeah. So the last two, Wolfang and Yamark, are identical to how they were in the original fight. So if you have time for donations, this would be a really good one. Boy, I sure do. I have a donation of $10 from Mom and Dad 94 saying, proud of you, son. Go get him. You're our mega boy. <laughs> Love you. Oh, my god. I didn't even tell them about <laughs> this. <laughs> Thanks, guys. They'll find you on the internet. Webs. I guess so. Orb Forum gave us $50 and said, Mega Man X6 has the best OST ever. Lays Heat Nick's hype. That guy has good taste. Ardell also has good taste. For $50, he says, Mega Man X is such an amazing series. Fantastic music and dashes for days. Put this towards killing the animals. Zero X4 gave us $75 and 55 cents, saying, third time watching a GDQ event live and I had to donate during the Mega Man block. Can't wait to see my favorite series get absolutely dominated. Good luck to all the runners. Pepsi Man gave us $25, saying Pep's Mega Man X is one of my favorite series of all time, and X6 is my favorite. Keep up the great work. 
All right, so we're all done with the refights. That just leaves uh, Sigma and Final Sigma. Big Sig. There's a very short stage here that I'll be mostly damage boosting through. Are you going to go for it since you equipped it? No. Oh, don't, yeah, do it, don't do it. No. Yeah, there are two things you can do. One of them is not worth it, so yeah. thankfully he's not doing mm -hmm. it. Uh, so this guy is weak to Z-Buster and also Guard Shell, like pretty much every other mm -hmm. boss in the game, but using Guard Shell is obnoxious. Yeah, so this so. is Hobo Sigma. He's a nice guy. Hopefully. The ideal Hobo oh, Sigma pattern is he doesn't do it. anything. <laughs> he does get harder than that. <laughs> If Hobo Sigma decides to attack you, things get hectic, but yeah. now we've got Hex Sigma. Hex Sigma, yeah. Yes. Shout outs to Hex Sigma. Every time Hobo Sigma takes damage, he has a chance to flow back, and if he flows back, he'll start doing attacks, and it, it gets really bad really fast. Fortunately, this boss uh, was kind enough to spawn platforms to let you get in Sui's on invincibility. Breakable platforms at that, yeah. So time is coming up really soon. As soon as this guy's health reaches zero, which will happen pretty quickly after he opens his mouth, uh, that's time. Oh, so the top heads are in the way there. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Please use it. No. <laughs> oh, my. Okay. He likes to that, troll. That's that how was unfortunate, is. yeah. Imagine getting hecked by Hex Sigma. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Well, let's give that another shot, shall we? Maybe you guys will get to see an, an Hobo actual Sigma attack. Doing attack. <laughs> we promise this is a real boss. Yeah, he doesn't just walk. Watch him do the same pattern. Okay, there, there, there's an actual attack. So throw some balls at you, and then some of the other things he can do is he can throw like these blades at you, which he was just about to do. He was gonna start, but <laughs> yeah. The blades are very annoying because they'll block your shots and it's kind of like a game of ping pong where you keep pushing it back. You, when you have hit to it. decide if you want to damage race them or if you want to try to dodge them. Yep. So Orsa just showed off what fighting Hex Sigma is <laughs> like casually, but yeah. now Orsa remembered he has Insuis on invincibility. Hopefully, so. yeah. He just felt bad for all the casual players out there, so he. It was kind of unfortunate what happened last time is the platform he needed to break just walked right into Sigma's mouth yeah. because... Well, I even need the invincibility. <laughs> you have a recovery. You can get it. Can okay. Alright, and time. Let's go to Power of Friendship. Yeah. You nerds. Don't be mean. <laughs> All right, so that was Mega Man X6. Um, this is a really fun speed game. I highly recommend it to anyone. Um, it's pretty easy to pick up. The hard strats are not necessary. But if you want to go for a good time, there's lots of depth. So shout outs to everyone who runs X6. Um, Fujiyama, Chokochu, 8-Bit is great, Satoru, these guys. Did I miss anyone? Not That's about really. it. All right, awesome. Maybe. So even if you don't like this game <laughs> casually, speedrunning yeah, might Yeah, definitely look minds. into speedrunning it. It's really fun. But I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you guys enjoyed the rest of the X-Block, too. Thanks again. And thank you, Orsa, for that wonderful run of Mega Man X6. Up next.